everybody, this is our very first um, Lunch and Learn of 2021, which, you know, if you would have told me when we had our first one that we'd be having the monthly at this point and make it into 2021, I would have been like, wow, that's going to be really cool. Um, I want to remind everybody that the session is recorded. Tony's going to be recording for us, and so it will be posted later, and we will send out that link along with any resources that um, we talk about in the, uh, in the discussion at, throughout. Um, if you're uncomfortable speaking up on record, you can send either comments or questions via the chat to, um, to me and I can read them or Esmeralda can, we can help you out with that. Um, let's see, this session is entitled How We Do at Rice Bowl Success and Kent Ferris, who's the Director of Social Action in case anybody wasn't aware, came up with a great catchphrase for this year, which is um, we need to think outside the bowl. Uh, it's, it's definitely going to be a little more challenging, but we're hoping that this session today will help people um, come up with some great ideas and, sh and share those with us. Um, so with that, I am going to introduce our first presenter. Um, Allison Riuta is the Midwest Region Volunteer Manager for Catholic Relief Services, and she's going to give us Kind of an overview of what um, the mission of Catholic Relief Services is and then some of her ideas for having a successful rice bowl program. So Allison, go ahead and take it away. Thanks Amy. Hi everybody. Great to be with you today. I uh, love every time I get to spend with folks from Davenport. It's always fun. It's great to see some familiar and also some new faces. So thanks for having me here today and for being interested in CRS Rice Bowl as well. And um, just congratulations to you all for being ahead of the curve and, and starting these conversations now so that you're ready uh, when Lent starts. I'm going to uh, share a brief presentation um, just to give, uh, like Amy said, just a quick overview of CRS and a, a few, um, share a few words about Rice Bowl and, and some ideas for this year. So um, bear with me while I get this all pulled up here. Okay, so uh, first of all, I just uh, wanna say, uh, you know, for those of you who may not be really familiar with CRS, uh, just uh, some basics, which is the CRS or Catholic Relief Services is the official international humanitarian agency of the Catholic community in the United States. So we work on behalf of Catholics in the US carrying out the, the US bishops mission to provide emergency relief and sustainable development. Um, and many of you may have heard of Catholic Charities. So Catholic Charities is basically our sister organization. So Catholic Charities is the US Catholic bishops response to serve our brothers and sisters in the US. And similarly, CRS is the bishop's res response to our brothers and sisters overseas. Uh, so quick facts, uh, CRS was founded in 1943 um, after World War II to help survivors in Europe. Uh, since then, we have expanded in size and reach more than 130 million people. Uh, and we uh, work in over 100, I think it's 114 countries right now. Um, on five continents. So for over 75 years, our mission has been to assist um, impoverished and marginalized people overseas. We work in the spirit of Catholic social teaching to promote um, the dignity and sacredness of the human person and the human life. Um, and so even though our mission is really rooted in our Catholic faith, uh, CRS serves based on need, uh, which means we work with really where the most need exists. We try to really reach uh, the most poor and, and vulnerable overseas. Um, and most of our work is actually conducted through local staff and local partnerships uh, by invitation, usually by Caritas or the local Caritas office in, in the countries where we work. Um, so that's a little bit about our, our programs overseas. Uh, we do also have quite a bit of work going on in the United States. So we complement this humanitarian and development work um, with policy analysis and advocacy 
to address the root causes of poverty. So while the overseas work is really focused on addressing sustainable development or emergencies in the US, we're really working on addressing those root causes through advocacy. Um, and that provides opportunities for US Catholics and others of goodwill uh, to participate in CRS's mission. Uh, the main way of doing this is through our Lead the Way campaign and then CRS chapters. So a while back we had a, a session um, about CRS chapters specifically um, and uh, it, it's really great, essentially building movement of folks around the world working together towards a common goal. Um, so the, the two primary ways are through advocacy and giving. Those are the two sort of main activities uh, that uh, people can volunteer to take part in with CRS. Uh, today we're here talking about probably the most well-known of those, which is CRS Rice Bowl. So um, CRS Rice Bowl uh, does raise funds for CRS's critical work around the world, but it's much more than a fundraiser. Um, CRS is really a complete Lenten faith and action program for families and also communities to really enrich the Lenten season. Um, so it really focuses on sort of these three pillars here, which are prayer. So renewing our life in prayer, this idea that prayer unites us with, with others around the world. The commitment to fasting, which is another tenet of, of Lent. So reminding us um, that, that fasting frees us from fear, from not having or being enough. And then this uh, practice of giving alms um, during the Lent as a way of being in solidarity with those around the world. So uh, I wanted to share because you know, today we're gonna be talking more about how do we prepare for Lent? How do we do successful fundraising? Um, and uh, I you know, would say it's not just fundraising, right? Like this is really a, a program to really enrich our faith and, and live it out. And something that we talk about a lot through CRS is sort of this Catholic or, or CRS perspective on fundraising as really being an invitation to participate in the mission. So um, it's, it's one way um, that yes, it sustains our programming, but it's really inviting others to participate in the mission of CRS and our Catholic faith. Um, it's a way for us to share the good news with others um, and invite others to live out their faith and their commitment to the common good. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about sort of the impact and, and the reasons why practical donations from Rice Bowl are really important, both to CRS and then also local communities. Um, there's really three key ways that donations help CRS. Um, they allow us to be agile in emergencies because by having private funds from donations, uh, we can move those quickly and efficiently to where it's needed when it's needed at a time uh, or during an emergency. Also makes us eligible or uh, able to leverage additional funds for big projects. Say for example, there's a you know, $5 million grant that we want to apply for for a big project um, having funds uh, from donors or, or private funds um, allows us to be eligible because we may have to meet say 5% of that uh, project uh, fund. So 5% of that 5 million uh, would be CRS's contribution. So it allows us to, to um, access bigger funds for bigger projects. Um, and then thirdly, uh, it also helps CRS implement holistic programming, which is really sort of the, the cornerstone of how we do our work. Um, and what I mean by that is say, for example, a project is fairly narrow in scope. So we receive funding for something like a well project. Well, the funding may only uh, allow us to dig or, or uh, install a well, right? So by having uh, private funds on hand, we can really, um, make that a holistic program. And what I mean by that is adding additional components that make it sustainable and uh, appropriate for the context and for the community. So it could be uh, teaching folks in the community proper water sanitation and hygiene practices or uh, doing some capacity building in the local communities so that they can maintain that well 
and really make it purposeful and, and improve the longevity of that of that project. So three, those are sort of the three ways that it, it helps CRS carry out our work. But another great element about rice flow, which we'll be talking about today and hearing more about, is that it also benefits the local communities. So 25% of the money raised um, through CRS Rice Bowl uh, in the Davenport Diocese will return back to the Davenport Diocese and support local programs there to address hunger and poverty. So it's a great uh, benefit both to CRS and, and to the diocese. Um, and I think we'll hear more today about how that funding has really um, helped or, or been used locally as well. So I know that was a lot of information, um, but I also just wanted to share uh, that uh, there are lots and lots of resources online for you to utilize either to start forming ideas or to enrich existing ideas that you already have or, or like we'll hear uh, later, um, you know, these best practices that you've seen working in the diocese. Just wanted to highlight a few things that could maybe, um, again, like enrich what you're already doing. So on the CRS Rice Bowl website, uh, you'll find videos and stories uh, from people around the world. Uh, this year we're highlighting three, three people from around the world who have uh, been part of CRS programs. Um, so you get to get to know them a little bit about their life um, and the impact of CRS uh, for them. There are also lesson plans, which are great for schools or religious education programs. Uh, so that could be helpful. And then uh, as always, we have our simple meatless meals uh, from around the world again. Uh, so this could be fun to plan something, maybe a virtual dinner event or something of that nature. So you can always find those online. And then finally, because we are working in such a virtual context, I just wanted to highlight that there are uh, lots of communication resources. So it, it could be, you know, there are pre-written bulletin announcements, there are social media tips, little blurbs that you can post and share, um, and all sorts of other uh, great, you know, snippets to use to really spread the word, uh, given the virtual nature of, of everything, including Lent this year. So I uh, just wanted to share that with you and highlight that. All right, any questions for me right now? If I not, was, just... I was totally <laughs> good. Um, oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Allison, very much. I, I want to point out Allison has been a, a great resource in the diocese. She's, she's very available and willing to um, help people in, in um, developing the programs within their parish. So um, I'll include her contact information when we send out the information after um, with the recording and all of that. Um, I'm actually going to share a screen with you um, to show you last year's grant recipients. Now I want you to keep in mind that last year um, we had gone virtual at the point that we were starting Rice Bowl. And so it was kind of a down year, but people still contributed and we were still able to, to give grants um, throughout the diocese. So I'm gonna put that list up and then Loxie Hopkins is gonna speak just for a few minutes about um, the grant program and um, how it how it works and, and who it's available to. Moxie, do you need me to unmute you? There we go. All right. Um, our parishes have been very generous with the rice bowl program in the past and um, and we also have been able to be generous with them. Um, because of the contributions that come from the parishes. Um, listed up there are some of the organizations that we've been able to assist because of the parish donations. Um, sadly, I was going to tell you in, in 2019, we had about $19,000 to distribute. We've had as high as $22,000 to distribute. But we all know what happened at um, 
during the Easter time this year and our parishes were closed. So we had about $8,000 to distribute to these organizations this year. Um, that's why it's so important that we're able to um, lift those numbers back up again. The need has never been so great in our diocese, I don't believe as it is right now, this year. Um, I think as well that can tell you that the numbers of calls coming in to her looking for assistance have grown and um, even at a time when they're closed. Um, so uh, anything that you can do to help, I would surely appreciate it. And if you are um, able to, to see organizations that work in your uh, community or perhaps in your deanery that haven't, aren't aware of rice balls and have not been able to take advantage of um, these programs, um, it would be great if you would let us know or let the organizations know that this funding is available because it's really important that we do this throughout the whole diocese and not just in uh, the Davenport area. So thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, we can do that later. Thanks, Loxy. Um, we actually have um, someone on the Zoom today who is um, the director, yep, director of one of the organizations that's been a Rice Bowl recipient. It's um, Reagan Michelson, and she's with Information, Referral, and Assistance Services in Clinton. And um, Reagan, if you wanted to just take a few minutes to um, explain what your organization does within the community, that would be, that would be great. Sure, sure. So um, we cover all of Clinton County. Um, we not only are information referral, but we're also known as Pantries United. So um, among our programs, one of our largest programs is to address the, the need of food insecurity in our community. Um, so under Pantries United, we have uh, currently three food pantries that are operating. Um, at the beginning of this year, we had four. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID, one of those um, did have to close just due to staffing issues and, and not being able to have people there to man the, the site. Um, but uh, anyway, so when somebody needs food in our community, they, they um, get a referral through our agency and we send them to the appropriate food pantry. Um, so we serve on average a month. Um, before COVID hit, we were looking at about between five and 600 a month um, every, every month throughout the year. Um, now, after COVID hit, um, our numbers, of course, have increased dramatically. Um, it's not uncommon for us to get, you know, 20 phone calls a day here at the office or, or more requesting food assistance. Um, we, we normally would do one food pantry a month per family, per household. Um, we've bumped that up to two if it's needed because we know circumstances are a little more strained this year than they have been in previous years. Um, but we've been supported by uh, the diocese for many years, not just through Operation Rice Bowl, but through St. Vincent's and, and um, other programs as well. So uh, we appreciate the support. You know, we, we see, as I said, a lot of people here in Clinton that have the need for food. Um, we're a smaller community than the Davenport community. So all the, all the help we, we can get really, um, really does benefit our community. Um, among just our regular food pantries, uh, we, do, we do have a backpack buddy program, which is where we get our support for St. Vincent's, um, which provides uh, weekend food packages to um, almost 200 children every weekend throughout the school year um, that are identified by teachers and counselors who would likely go without food without our help, um, as well as mobile food pantries, which we do every quarter through the Riverbend Food Bank, which brings, I think, um, we serve usually about 300 people per uh, mobile food pantry, and it's um, tens of thousands of pounds of food each, each time that truck comes here to our area. So... Thank you so much, Reagan. Wow, that's impressive work and important work. So thank you. We appreciate your efforts. Well, thank you. And thank you for supporting us because we, as I said before, we, we don't get any state or federal. So everything we get um, greatly impacts how we're able to help. Terrific. Thanks. Glad to be able to do that. Um, 
So we, we've had an opportunity to hear both on a kind of a global level and on a, a local level why the funds are important. And um, so now we're going to kind of get to the meat of this particular Lunch and Learn, and that is um, how do you have a successful rice bowl program within your parish? And especially given this year when so many people are not able to participate on site um, in the parish, um, we're, what can we do? How can we make this better? And so um, we reached out to some of the parishes uh, in the diocese and asked if they had anyone who um, would be able to speak a little bit about what, what's been going on in the past in their parishes and maybe any thoughts or questions that they have um, about how to move forward on this. Um, and one of the things I want to make everybody aware of is that um, at the Social Action Office, we've started creating kind of a living document now that is going to have um, links to resources, um, both from CRS, but also for, um, let me share it, also for, from, from people throughout the diocese. So um, we'll have different ideas in there. Any that come out in this lunch and learn, we're gonna add those in. And then we ask you if you have ideas, if you try things and they work, if you try things and they don't, please um, reach out to us. We've got Esmeralda's uh, email address up at the top so that um, if you can provide information to us, we will get that in that document. That's one way that we can all continue to support each other um, even after the lunch and learn is finished. Um, so, Laura Hollingrake, I know you're on there somewhere. I have so, so many people, well, I can't have everybody on the screen at one time. Laura's not here. Oh. She couldn't make it. So, I'm Jackie Perkins. My okay, husband Jackie. Jackie with me. So, we're on Social Action Committee, and I told her that I would attend for her. Terrific. Thank you so much. So, I'm going to tell you what we did in the past, and I'm hoping you guys can help us with what we do in the future. Um, we have always done, um, not, not always, but for the last few years, done a taste of Lent at the beginning of Lent, whereby several of us on the, on the committee would make some of the food that was shown on the CRS website and then uh, just had it so that patient, uh, people could come through after mass and just try some of that to see what the food's like um, and have information on the table about what countries they came from and how these people lived and a little bit about their background. Um, also, when it came to distributing the bowls, we, we always had somebody talk about um, CRS in the beginning. And generally every other weekend in Lent, we'd have somebody up there um, presenting a film from CRS, a short one, and then talking about it and then tying that into something we can do as parishioners. And it would be something maybe um, like one year we talked about um, how water is an issue in many of these places. And so we wanted to know, you know, just realize how blessed we are that we have as much water as we want. So we asked people that um, every time you took a cup of water, wash your hands, take a bean and put it in a cup for every person in the family, have them do that. And then at the end of the week, gather up your beans and either give a dime or a quarter or a dollar, whatever you could afford and put that in the rice bowl. And that went over pretty good. That was one of the things we did. Um, we did that for like two weeks at a time. Um, that was one of the challenges we have after we presented the videos. Um, we always had the, the rice bowls blessed the day that we gave them out. Somebody would be there to hand them out to people, but we bring them up to father after mass and he would bless them so that we could um, distribute those. Um, and then there was always something in the bulletin to remind us that this was Lent and something about um, from the CRS website that we could put in um, to encourage people. So that's what we've done. We don't know what we're gonna do this year because I doubt that we're gonna do very many videos um, because they don't want the masses to be that long. So I, I don't know. We're sort of gonna, you're gonna tell us what we're gonna do. <laughs> Um, well, I think that's, first of all, kudos to you, great ideas. Um, and I do think probably, um, I, I, I mean, I had a few things going through my head. I'm sure some other people did. So when we get to the discussion part, I'm sure people are going to have some suggestions for you. 
Um, okay. We did want to hear from um, a few other people. Um, so uh, Barb Foster, I think Barb's on. Barb, are you on? It was hard keeping track of everybody's. Yes, yeah, I think she is on. Yes, I'm oh. on. Oh, terrific. So Barb, did you have anything to share from what you've been doing at Prince of Peace? Um, yes, at Prince of Peace, the last few years, one of the things that they, we have been doing is we've been including this, our school, our Catholic school. Um, we pass out some of the rice bowls to the kids and we go down there to the school and we kind of promote the fact that what, how many countries and different things and, and where we do with our, all the rice bowl money and everything. And uh, that has helped. They've taken them home to their families and, and have brought back and that has helped quite a bit. Um, this, this year too, I think probably like every place, it's going to be different. Um, otherwise we pass them out at church um, and father usually has somebody maybe get up and talk. We haven't actually showed videos, but we get up and talk, but like, like she's the other lady said, we're gonna be limited because we can only have mass for so long, but um, he'll probably still have somebody come up and talk a little bit about the rice bowl and uh, try to promote it. And we do promote it every week in the bulletin too. But the school, being that we have the Catholic school and the kids, that has helped a lot. We kind of include them and um, that's been a, a good resource for some of the, the funds and everything that we've done. So, and otherwise, you know, we work through the pantries and everything and we work with Reagan Mickelson all the time uh, with information and referral through our charity committee at church too. So, um, She's a great resource for us in here in Clinton. Um, we just got done doing the holiday network together and uh, had good success this year on that. So um, it's a great, it's with her having that here in Clinton and, and everything and we can work together that that does help too with the parish. So okay. that kind of gives an idea what we do usually every year. Okay, terrific. Thank you very much. Again, great ideas. Um, I know that at um, St. Mary and Matthias in Muscatine, um, Lori Ferris and uh, with her sidekick, Kent Ferris, um, <laughs> have been very actively involved in promoting Rice Bowl. Um, so uh, I, we have one phone that's on. Is that Lori by any chance, Kent? Or? It, it is not. Uh, okay, so, so I'll, I'll, so I'll cover gonna... for her. Cool, cool. One way that you can promote Rice Bowl is to, uh, when you get a copy of this recording, share it with your social action commission, with your pastoral council, with the person that's writing your bulletin in order that they can share this message with your parish. And I'm intending to reference my own parish. And there are a few names that I wanna highlight to talk about the work that they've done. And, CRS means Catholic Relief Services. In our parish, CRS also means Caponet really served. Mary Louise Caponet was in her mid 90s. She helped our parish once a month provide a meal at the homeless shelter. She also yearly wrote a request for rice bowl funds to come back to Muscatine to assist with that fund, uh, that, that uh, feeding effort. Mary Louise has since passed away, but our promotion this year will be in honor of Mary Louise, who so typified community involvement relating to that 25%. The other person that I would uh, highlight, another person that I would highlight as far as parish work is Lori Ferris. Lori regularly goes to the school and speaks before final blessing at masses during Rice Bowl or during Lent to promote Rice Bowl. She also enlists the assistance of who was a preschooler who's now in elementary school, a young man named Albert. So when Lori goes to uh, share and provide the message, she has an elementary school child with her, and they do a wonderful job of promoting rice bowls and making sure people appreciate the need for generosity. 
Another person that has been instrumental in the efforts that we've been able to undertake is Principal Ben Nitzel at our Catholic school, and particularly retired Catholic school teacher Deb Dunsmore. Incredible support over many years. We hope for that legacy to continue. Finally, we could not have done it without the incredible support of our past pastor, Father Troy Richmond, and we hope for that same level of support from Father Chris Weber, our new pastor as of July 1st. Um, and before I conclude, I just wanna say that both Barb and Jackie's parishes have been incredibly generous, not only in the funds that they've generated, but also being mindful of the needs in their community and kind of helping shepherd those types of um, rice bowl grant requests to come back to us. Three minutes and 11 seconds and I will stop, but thank you. <laughs> Great, thanks Kent. Um, and pass along some thanks to Lori for her efforts. We greatly appreciate that. Um, at this point, we're going to open it up for discussion. Um, I do, want to, I do want to let people know that um, in that document that I referenced, I will put it back up real quick. Um, I do want to highlight a couple of things that may be useful um, and that we're kind of drawing from a little bit today. From CRS in this section, there are actually specifically a couple of documents um, that talk about virtual, um, virtual ideas, actually, three resources. Um, they have um, a document, this ideas for virtual rice bowl engagement, where they actually got ideas from um, coordinators from multiple dioceses. So um, kind of like what we're doing here, they did on a larger scale and pulled it together into a document. Um, and then there's a tip sheet that they just came up with themselves in English and in Spanish. They also are having some virtual speaker events this year and they have them broken down by, um, you know, one that might be for elementary students, one that might be for high school students, one that might be for families. And it's opportunities to connect throughout Lent um, and have somebody talk a little bit about the countries that are the um, primary focus or the people who are the primary focus this year. Um, I, I, it, they're trying to help us as much as they possibly can. So those resources I would definitely recommend um, checking out, going in and, and reading through those, as well as just kind of looking through some of the ideas that have come up already here um, in our list. Um, and I'm sure we're gonna be talking about a, a lot of those, but um, we've had one question come in um, about, uh, people who would normally go door to door or give money at mass asking are there ways to donate from home um, and I don't know Allison if you want to field that one or if you want me to um, but do you want to catch that one sure yeah so um, typically as, as many of you know you get your rice bowl box at mass um, this year, there's also an option of just downloading and printing a wrapper so that you can create your own rice bowl um, and submit those. And then I think the, probably the easiest way is to do an online donation to rice bowl as well. So you can just do direct giving, um, maybe use your rice bowl at home uh, to collect throughout the year and then you just donate it directly online. Um, that was still because of the zip code and your diocese, it will all be marked. So it will all be tracked and that 25%, like just, I don't want there to be a doubt in your mind that if you're doing it virtually, instead of taking them into the parish, that that 25% wouldn't come back to you because it, it still will. So um, I think that's what I, I would mention. I'm not sure if you have other things to add, Amy. Um, I, the, the only thing, and I, I apologize, I just saw this today. I didn't see it earlier, but um, there is a link um, from our document that talks about creating an online community giving page. Mm -hmm. So you can set up a page that not, you don't, you wouldn't just go necessarily to the general donate to CRS page, but a page that's specific like to your parish, I'm assuming. Um, is that correct, Allison, that you can yeah. set up? Yeah, so in the past year, we've made available an online giving platform where you can go online and create a community 
page um, for whatever sort of fundraiser you want to do basically uh, to benefit CRS. So if you want to do it for Rice Bowl, this could be your parish website or your school website for Rice Bowl. So uh, that's another great option because then you can share that link with others. You can track your progress. You can see who's donated and send thank yous, for example. Um, you can maybe make it into uh, something like what Jackie mentioned, like some sort of challenge, right? If you have a virtual challenge happening. So there's all sorts of ways to be creative, but yes, thanks for bringing that up, Amy. That's a great idea. Okay. Um, and then uh, I wondered too, Esmeralda, you had um, mentioned, I know that you had talked about the fact that you could download this label and print, print it out and make your own um, rice bowl uh, receptacle. But you also talked about having uh, a, a different way to pick up the rice bowls versus handing them out at church. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah, and one of the CRS actually uh, webinars that I attended, they mentioned having a drive-through curbside pickup, like where um, parishioners can just come and drive by the parish to pick up their rice bowls. And then you can pair it with a food donation drop-off as well. So that's another option. And I'm thinking that um, even though you're doing a curbside, you might still be able to ask um, your parish priest to bless the uh, rice bowl boxes ahead of that. Um, so that even, you know, I know it's not the same as coming together as community at the church, but to, to know that that tradition carries on, even though um, not everybody can be there. Um, that, that might be one thing that um, you could consider to be able to continue that um, specific tradition out of your parish. Um, other thoughts, other ideas as people were? Um, uh, Amy, I had one. I was thinking um, during the COVID times when we've all been home, um, I have looked forward to some of the social Zooms that we have, particularly the faith um, seminars, um, St. Anthony's put on one um, on racism using um, the material that says, uh, slip my, oh, open wide your heart. Um, that was really fascinating and very well received. Anyhow, I'm thinking um, we used to do a lot of rice bowl work with the soup suppers on Wednesday night, um, perhaps do virtual um, discussions on Wednesday night that could talk about rice bowl countries and what's happening in those countries, talk about what's happening in your own communities and what we could do. Um, I, I just think that often um, during this time, any kind of virtual contact that we have with each other, particularly as it, as it um, comes to our faith is really important that we continue that because people are, I think, feeling um, a little lost sometimes and lonely. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to think outside the box on how to do these things virtually. Terrific, Boxy. Um, I just want to let everybody know that I did have a question about where the online resources are, and I just put the link in um, the chat, but also that's going to be emailed out along with the link to the recording um, after, after um, this afternoon. So don't, if you don't feel like you have to rush and write it down, we'll, we'll make and it. And then I will, I will also add that link to our diocesan website under Rice Bowl. Yep. Um, you know, Loxy, um, I, your idea of um, using Zoom to connect. Um, I was wondering about that with um, the meals. Esmeralda and I were talking about that earlier today. Um, you know, it probably is not the right time right now for um, us to make a meal for everybody, but you know, they do have really, really simple recipes with simple ingredients. And maybe you could promote a recipe um, at the beginning of Lent and um, have a Zoom gathering on a particular night where maybe you ask people to make that recipe and then share that meal while you're ha having that talk that Loxy was mentioning, or you know, showing the videos from CRS. Um, 
you know, so that it's, it's not, you know, it's not the same as being there, but as someone who has kids in the Pacific Northwest, I can tell you, I will take a Zoom meal with my kids any day of the week yeah. versus not seeing them at all. Um, and I think maybe uh, there will be a lot of people who would be receptive to it, especially if we can get, you know, people like our parish priests to be there with us. I think that would be awesome. Or deacons, you know, the people who um, are able, who, who would normally connect with us anyway in those settings at the church or in, in the parish hall. So. I'm thinking too that if some people that are interested in doing this aren't really familiar with Zoom or um, go to meeting or whatever you would use in your parish, that um, we have people that would be willing to help walk you through how to set that up and um, how to set up the Zoom and send out the information to your parishioners so that they can uh, participate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Always, always feel free to reach out to the Social Action Office um, for assistance, and we can connect you with people who are um, really, really knowledgeable. And, and I will tell you, um, I, it's not a very difficult thing to do, um, but um, the first few times you do it, you know, it's kind of like riding a bike. You're a little, little off balance at first, and if we can help you get through those first couple times, we're more than happy to do that. Kent? I just want to share <clears throat> want to share a quick story about a, a middle schooler a couple of years ago back when we would have the videos on on disc and we're I'm doing a, a rice bowl meal in Gannon Hall here in Muscatine and uh, he comes up to me afterwards and he goes can I borrow <clears throat> can I borrow your disc uh, I'll I'll show it to my class and he's a Catholic school uh, student and I'm like dude go for it so. <laughs> This fifth grader took it upon himself because he was he was so impressed, so inspired, and and so without without a formal designation, he kind of came like the class captain, and his teacher didn't have to do much because he was so captivated by the um, the video clips from the highlighted countries, and and so I always think of him, and and it was just he. It, it, it resonated with him and, and he, was, he was deputized. He was ready to go and, and, um, and had, they had a good, they had a good um, campaign. It's a good idea. I, I had two ideas to share related to it um, that I've heard. So we had some university students in Illinois that worked with their um, university food service um, I'm trying to like their cafeteria, right? So they essentially like created meal kits for people to take home to make one of those recipes and have the little recipe card in it. So that was like, it would take a little bit more organization, but I think it could be really fun too if you, you know, wanted to, to look into that idea of doing like prepared little meal kits that people could pick up and then join online to sort of, you know, share the results of each of their, uh, you know, meal kit preparation and then have this discussion like you were saying. Um, the other was uh, a group of university students in Texas actually that uh, invited a chef to come and teach them how to prepare gnocchi, which that doesn't really have anything to do with rice bowl meals. But so all the students gathered, they had, a, you know, I think over 30 or 40 people on this call. So they learned from this chef, they were all making gnocchi together. And then it led into this discussion about CRS and rice bowl and hunger you know, global hunger as, as sort of the theme of the night, right? So that was just another idea. If somebody had, you know, somebody with a great family recipe, even that they wanted to teach folks that could lead into an activity, like Loxy was saying, just this like yearning for connection right now um, that would also then be educational. You could highlight, you know, rice bowl and things like that. So just wanted to share those two ideas. Um, and Esmeralda and I had talked earlier about, um, one of the one of the ideas that came from one of the CRS documents was to um, like make videos. Which now that people have their cameras on their phones, it's a little bit easier to do that. But maybe having um, the bishop Kent, we'll, we'll see if you'll ask him, um, have the bishop do a little video either of you know here's 
here's how I prepared this meal and here's the end result. You know, not necessarily having to do the whole how to cook the meal, but, um, or to ask, ask um, somebody else out of your parish to do that and to share those videos, um, you know, put them on your parish website. Um, if you have a parish YouTube channel, put them out there. So if anybody else has any suggestions that you want to pop in now that we've dealt with Marta. Um, I just had a couple. I work at the Newman Center in Iowa City. So our students um, sometimes have taken charge of CRS Rice Bowl stuff. And I guess a couple ideas. We have a lot of like small group Bible studies. So the idea of, you know, doing things on a large scale, but also on a small scale, like they would individual, like our service and social justice fellow would individually like talk to each of the, go to the Bible studies or talk to the leaders and get them engaged. And then also I know our students are on social media all the time. So this idea of like videos, I know um, we record mass at the Newman Center. Um, and so I know, and I go to St. Patrick's here in Iowa City and there's things recorded there too. So like recording something that can be shown on your online mass mm -hmm. viewings, so like before or after. I know in the past at St. Patrick's after, um, like during the offertory time, they would go up and like read a story from the CRS and we've done things like make the meals at Newman, you know, from the CRS recipes from the rice bowl. Um, so I guess like thinking about what we've done with students would be like, definitely like utilizing all your small groups and then social media is big, um, obviously doing videos, um, anything recorded and also using like the social media. If you want to hit the younger crowd, you're going to need to do like Instagram or, you know, something other than Facebook. So just trying to think of ideas of, if you're trying to look at ideas that appeal to uh, different age groups to think about like how you would reach different age groups um, and how you would access them, especially obviously because we're not all at church every weekend um, to hear all the same things. Okay. Um, you know, and that really, um, there for those who are are thinking oh my gosh i don't i don't know how to get a video on a website that's okay um there's probably somebody in your parish who manages your parish website and there are so many wonderful videos at the crs rice bowl site that are already made for you it's very easy to just simply link to those and they might be two and a half minutes long um, and they're very engaging but I do agree that if you're wanting to um, connect with some of your younger parishioners, um, trying to come up with maybe some homemade videos and putting them out on social media sites that appeal to them um, would be awesome. Um, and don't be afraid to ask some of those younger people to help you. Um, as Kent said, you know, uh, Lori was able to have somebody come up and do a presentation at mass with her who started out in preschool. He had a fifth grader ask if he could borrow a disc to show to people. Um, I think you'll find that kids are really, really willing to jump in and help you. Um, and I do know that CRS uh, Rice Bowl has a couple of different hashtags. So hashtags are a quick and easy way for people to find content related to Rice Bowl in all these social media platforms. Um, and so just, let your young people kind of take your your ask and run with it and you might be surprised at, at what they're able to accomplish for you. Um, and I will say that uh, Esmeralda and I were kind of looking at the um, spreadsheet for the past few years, um, going back about six or seven years on, on how we've been doing as, as a diocese on Rice Bowl. And it's very clear that um, we had we had three years where we had kickoff breakfast, where we opened it up um, to have parishes come in and we kind of did a kickoff and got everybody enthused, all of the people who were coordinators. Um, and then the fourth year, parishes hosted their own kickoff breakfast. And there were significant increases those years in giving um, because we have very generous people all throughout our diocese. It's just helping them to be aware um, and, and making them feel, as Allison said, invited um, to participate in that mission. Um, I, I think if they saw the list of the organizations throughout our diocese and what they did, um, 
it would help them to understand, you know, you are making a difference worldwide and that's so important. But in addition, you're making a difference in our communities. Um, so there, I'm off my soapbox. Other ideas, other, other thoughts people have? Eileen? I do have an idea for parishes. Oh, uh, hold on. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Boxy, I had told Eileen. I think she said. Oh, having... I'm sorry. Okay. No, send Eileen. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Eileen, and then we'll okay, follow uh, up with well, Boxy. Um, I had some ideas that your ideas were inspiring me. Uh, so I just retired a year ago from All Saints Catholic School in Davenport, and um, I was also with the student council and organization, and we the student council coordinated a challenge among the students. Kids like those kind of fun peer pressure things. And um, we wanted to make it though, where they will all be winners. You know, it wasn't about, oh, who contributed the most. So we handled it that every class with their teacher would set their own goal and of what they hope to raise. And so that was just, you could all be a winner. Well. Um, the other fifth grade class, I taught fifth grade, the other fifth grade class, they were wild, like they playing $700. I'm like, whoo, that would be great. But, you know, uh, then it was so hard that they didn't do too well at all. I think they gave up rather quickly. Um, my class, we, well, we didn't go for 700, but whatever we did, we kept surpassing it and they love that. And so we kept upping it several times. So um, again, it wasn't, you could all win if you met your goal, but um, really the winners were whoever gave the, the people that we, the money went to. But um, so that was one thing. Um, but then I wanna share a story. It's really not about CRS or Rice Bowl, but it was about Mary's Meals, which maybe some of you know about. Um, a speaker came and spoke at the school about Mary's Meals. And afterwards, this one boy, fifth grade, he came to me and he said, I'm going to, I have all this money in my, you know, piggy bank and I'm going to go bring it tomorrow. And like, and it was a, I know it was over a hundred dollars. And I was like, oh, that's wonderful. But you sure you talk about your parents. And um, it was so heartwarming. And I told the gal that was speaking about this student. So um, enthusiasm. And then I got him a shirt too, because I mean, he was just so, like anxious or excited about it. So I gave him a shirt that, um, cause they had to be bought that day or something cause the speaker was there. But anyway, it was really, really lovely to see his enthusiasm and that can really carry over to the students. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the videos are a really great idea. Something in the beginning that kind of it's visual, gets them motivated. It's, um, they, they're learning, but it's visual and gets them motivated there. I'm um, trying to think of maybe one other thing would be um, as we're in COVID-19 and we're, you know, eating more at home and we're a lot of people have said how they, they save money mm -hmm. by eating at home. And so uh, maybe that could be just a suggestion in a parish bulletin as it relates to CRS, uh, just like, um, you know, if you feel so inclined, maybe think of what you're saving on a particular, you know, night instead of eating out as we might have more, how much, what was the difference that you saved? And then, cause I mean, you know, it's not easy for people who might've, you know, had lost their job, but if, if that's not the case, then you might actually be saving money during this time and eating more healthfully. And you could actually see yeah, I can do that quite easily. Give the difference from eating out and give that portion, you know, each week into the rice bowl. So there's just some, some ideas. Another last thing, maybe making a chart, you know, like one of those temperature things that, uh, you know, st you start out at nothing and then you see how uh, it grows and that's very visual and kind of motivating and um, you could do that in one's home, you could do that for the parish, and then that could be put, um, you know, a little picture of it in the bulletin or um, on, you know, a little 
if they do have a little video of the CRS that could go along with it, but just to show how the parish is doing with CRS, with the Operation Rice Bowl, you know, starting at nothing and how it's growing. And I think people like that visual uh, sign of progress. Thanks, Eileen. Loxie, you were gonna add something? Yes, I was thinking that um, many of the communities around our parishes have uh, people living in the communities or perhaps even in your parishes that are actually from the countries that CRS highlights. Um, if you decide to do virtual um, soup suppers or whatever, it might be a really good idea to try to get someone from those countries to uh, talk to you firsthand about their experiences and um, their countries that they're living in. And, and some may even have been served by uh, CRS in those countries. I also wanted to tell you an organization that I belong to bought tablets um, to loan to people that don't have tablets to be able to do the Zoom meetings and such. And so at, the, at this time we've bought um, three tablets for elderly people that have been very isolated that are now able to participate in things that the organization does. And, in, and actually was on, um, the St. Anthony's seminars that I was on because they had access finally. Terrific. Okay, we've got about a minute left. I always try to be very respectful of everybody's time. So I will leave the Zoom running. I don't, I won't shut it down if people want to stay on to share anything else, but I do want to take a moment to just thank our presenters. Um, Allison and um, Reagan and uh, Barb and Jackie and then Kent. I um, appreciate you guys taking the time to share with us. I think um, this has been a good forum for exchanging ideas like this. And I really hope that as you are going back to your parishes, um, if you have additional ideas, um, and again, things that work as well as maybe things that you try that don't work, please pass those on to us so that we can share those out to everybody. Um, but um, okay, any other people, ideas, things that you wanna share, questions you wanna ask? Okay, all right, well, I guess we will call it um, next month, just to let you know, um, our lunch and learn will be, we're going to talk about resettlement. Um, we'll have a couple of different speakers who are going to talk with us about um, immigrants to our country who are, uh, and refugees who are being helped to resettle, um, both from the perspective of the organizations that do the actual work to help bring people in, as well as um, the communities that are welcoming of them and, and helping them to fully integrate into the communities. So we hope you'll join us. Esmeralda? I just want to let you guys know that um, CRS is starting to ship the materials, so you should be getting uh, materials pretty soon if you submitted an order. And then if you're not sure if your parish submitted an order, just send me an email and I can um, double check and see if you have materials coming. Got my Thank box you. today. Yay. <laughs> yeah, Lent will be here before we know it, so. All right. Well, thank you all so much. I hope to see many of you again on one of our future Lunch and Learns. Take care.